It's 10.53 in the morning, West Coast time, Thursday, the 20th of June, June. Donald Sutherland passed away today. Hey, uh, got the news on the flash like everybody else had. I got it from, uh, I got it from ABC7. They had a lot of tributes for this gentleman here. I uh, popped the story in about 10.44. I'd seen this guy on uh, the movie MASH for the first time. I had better lips, I could whistle it better. Maybe some of the younger generation would know him. Not as much on Hunger Games, but uh, the older generations, we'd seen him coming across, even on the movie The Dirty Dozen. And uh, hell of an actor. I I know everybody else could say he's a hell of an actor. Kiefer Sutherland. Um. Announced it to the world. The guy was challenging himself on a lot of roles coming out. A lot of televisions. Actually, a lot of movies he came out. He relished it. He relished it. I looked at the role he did for Hawkeye. It was crazy. They were trying to play it as crazy surgeons according to a book written long ago. Original MASH book. I don't think anybody else had read, read the book. But, uh, I uh, never did see Actually, I never did read the book. Wish I had. I said it was about three doctors. Well, that was the name of it. A novel about three army doctors. 1968. Written by Richard Hooker pen name of a former surgeon named of Richard Homburger. And through it came out the series at uh, the movie first of MASH and the crazy character of Hawkeye who then later betrayed by Alan Alda. <clears throat> and of the zany stuff that was put on the television to nearly drama series uh, for nearly 10 or 11 seasons. A lot of fans keep re-watching it because it was such good stuff, but uh, watching the movie is a little bit more raunchier, harder to deal with. They had to tone it down. They had to cut out some of the stuff until you actually saw the actual movie of it on screen and then you'd see why they had to tone it down. Especially when it was going to be replayed on <coughs> on television. I bleep out a, flu, um, a few lines here and there. The hardest thing about the book, or actually about the movie, is not just hearing about Donald Sutherland's death. It's about the song that's almost taboo sometimes. <coughs> but without the lyrics, you'd never know what the song was all about. Written by Johnny Mandel. 
I was a teenager of one of the sons of the producer, I think. And well, let me uh, get that information for you. Not playing it. I'm just going to say it because I know somehow this thing would this thing would uh, get to me. Well, actually, worse than that, it would pull things off. Wikipedia search on it. The title of it is Suicide is Painless. Written, de definitely in, indeed written by Johnny Mandel and Michael Altman for the movie. Sung by the Ron Hinkling singers. But the instrumental was used for television series throughout time. They were using this song in one or two areas of the main movie in regards to a dentist that was having issues regarding his love life. But regarding this song, it was one of the hardest things to deal with because of the lyrics itself. Maybe controversial during those days, but even these days it's controversial because the algorithms don't like it as much. It reflects a great deal of, I don't know, what would it reflect? Because if somebody actually mentioned it, without the music on it, I could say it. But uh, keep this in mind, this has already been out there for a long while. So the lyrics go, through early morning fog I see, visions of the things to be. The pains that are withheld from for me, I realize and I can see. And the chorus goes, that suicide is painless, brings on many changes, and I can take it or leave it if I please. I try to find a way to make all of our joys relate without that ever-present hate. But now I know that it's too late. And the chorus again. The game of life is hard to play. I'm going to lose it anyway. The losing card I'll someday lay. So this is all I have to say. Again, the chorus. The only way to win is cheat and lay it down before I'm beat and to another give my seat for that's the only painless feat. Again, the chorus. The sort of time will pierce our skins. It doesn't hurt when it begins. But as it works its way on in, the pain grows stronger. Watch it grin, but there goes the chorus again. A brave man once requested me to answer questions that are key. Is it to, is it to be or not to be? And I reply, oh, why ask me? Because suicide is painless. It brings on many changes, and I can take it or leave it if I please. And you can do the same thing if you please. Hard to hear when you listen to this thing. You watched the movie so many times. You don't quite grasp until maybe later on in life then you start thinking about it. And the scenes that they would show are what's supposed to have been a mobile armor surgical hospital receiving incoming patients, locations filled in Malibu, Malibu, California, in the canyons. Malibu State Park, if I'm not mistaken. There's an area out there that people hike to. <laughs> Very long walk, but about a couple of miles in. And they would see the area that the set once inhabited. There's very few things left out there that gives you indications mash was there. But it's supposed to be a representation of a, mar uh, 
the hospital. The helicopters would come in at a certain area, land on the pad, and the choppers would come in. Actually, the the uh, jeeps, trucks with the Red Cross on them would come up, grab the people, take them down below, and in the buildings that used to be there it would be the operating area. The tents would be set up all over the place. Would be the would be the living quarters, operational areas of the hospital, including the tent for the commanding officer. It used to be a staple watching that in the 70s through the 80s. Tried to do a, a show called Aftermath. Only lasted maybe about a couple of seasons, but after that, ratings couldn't keep up. So, But it's still out there. It's still out there. You just have to find it on YouTube or find the DVDs to it. Well, it was the only thing I knew about Donald Sutherland back then. It was he—he he was a hell of an actor, and he played the ca title character Hawkeye Pierce. Well, not title character, but one of the main characters out there. What was it? Gold. Let me get the cash. When I first saw this film on cable, I was a kid. I was a teenager. I didn't realize these characters would mean anything to me. I saw Donald Sutherland, okay? Elliot Gould played Trapper John McIntyre. Sally Killerman, Margaret Houlihan. Tom Skerritt, Duke Forrest. Robert Duvall. Major Burns, Joanne Plug played the Lieutenant Dish. Renee Ajabois, they played Father Mulcahy. David Arkin, Sergeant Volmer. Roger Bowen played uh, Colonel Blake. The original, Gary Berghoff, Radar. Fred Williamson, Spirit Jacker Jones, and then John Shuck. Painless. Fear, uh, Painless is supposed to be the uh, dentist over there. Most of these guys are still alive. Well, actually, not many of them are still alive. But they played pivotal roles that I would see in different places, in different films, in different television shows. Tom Scared would go on with his film crew and, and uh, also played a series of, not mis uh, mistaken, of picket fences. Elia Gould basically stayed in the film. That was one guy I still wanted to meet. I don't know, something about the guy, I just... I liked him. A great deal on him. Had a lot of respect. And including Donald Sutherland, I had a lot of respect. I mean, he played the one movie called Outbreak. And, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Donald Sutherland was in that one. The Dirty Dozen, I know about. I talked about that one. saw him in it. He played a lot of characters. But I remember the movie Outbreak that he was in. Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman was in that one. I remember they played this one because it was just, I don't know, something about the movie just kind of scared the hell out of me concerning about viral and, and bacteria and stuff, but he played a villain general who wanted to keep his his secrets. He wanted to keep the uh, disease protected 
use it as a weapon or a last resort. And we also had Rene Renaud, uh, Rousseau, Morgan Freeman, that. Well, they would go out. They would talk about things, and the thing. But, uh, it was a hard, heavy movie concerning about an act, outbreak of uh, Motaba. Uh, something of a fictional virus that would destroy people's lives in a matter of hours. I remember that one more than I remembered. Uh, some of the other stuffs that he uh, that he did, but Mash was the one that stuck in my head all the time. Donald, uh, Mr. Sutherland had played a long list of films from 1963 onwards. I mean, Dirty Dozen was one of those fictionals. That I would also remember, but the rest of the stuff is just. Oh no, Kelly's Heroes. I hadn't seen that movie. He played an oddball. Uh, he played Sergeant Oddball on that one. He like a hippie surfer guy, but this was supposed to be in the World War II film. Uh, Clint Eastwood was in a cast of others in there trying to steal Hitler's gold. Uh, portions of it I would remember of it Professor David Jennings National Lampoon's Animal House my brother would have remembered that one as well there are certain scenes that I don't even talk about for that particular film I'm afraid he and John Belushi are going to have it up on that one there Ordinary People that was also an emotional harder one to, to watch back in 1980 on that uh, how to deal with a rebellious teenager. Just a long list of things that meant something. But some of these films, I hadn't even seen, except maybe if I was there to watch some of it. But I hadn't. Because guy has to eat and keep up rent. Plays a film, Space Cowboys, or does voice acting in a fantasy film. But it's still money coming into his pocket. But still adds a long list of what he has done. I'm scrolling through the stuff I'm trying to watch. Uh, just to see if I can understand what, you know, if i actually seen some of the films. One of the series I was watching was The Hunger Games, and he played uh, President uh, Snow in that one, one of the villains, one of the main villains in the thing. So throughout the films of The Hunger Games series, this is what he was known for, He's playing that kind of a villain. Actually, I never did see the movie Backdraft too. I've seen the original, but uh, never seen the original. Oh, direct to DV, that's why I never saw it. So other than that, <clears throat> all the films that he's he's done, not to mention, actually he has, I'll take the back on it, on my video here. He has done uh, televisions uh, back in the 60. Um, maybe a bit of television films. Uh, I guess throughout his lifetime, but I just never bothered to watch some of this stuff. Because I never heard some of this stuff. That's the thing. <clears throat> a film, two films, Moby Dick and Treasure Island, played Captain Flint. I'd seen some of the films concerning about it. And he was in the uh, HBO series put on, a, uh, put on Prime, Amazon Prime, Lawman Bass Reefs. It plays a judge in it. And I gotta watch it. I gotta watch that one. He's been nominated a lot of things. I mean, they've got a, a Wikipedia 
filmography on the gentleman and a, and a career in this, on this guy. Yeah, he impressed the living daylights out of me. So right now they're still working on the article in itself. When we start losing our older uh, Sesbians actor, when we start losing them, we lose a lot of history that they've gone through, a lot of a lot of background information that hopefully some people have actually gathered, but it's not enough because we lose a lot of what create creativity is and was. I'm going to miss him, and I'm going to miss a lot of them because a lot of those actors meant something to us a great deal. Maybe some of the fans are lucky enough to have the chance to meet them. And maybe a few of them got to know him better. Wherever he is, I hope he's well. I wish him and his family well. But yeah, this this kind of hit me out of the out of the ballpark here.